Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, our host, Mr. Soji Apampa, the Chief Executive Officer, Integrity Organization. Your Excellency, the Acting President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, the Deputy Governor of Lagos State, um, Dr. Christopher Kolade, our honoree, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, to many Nigerians, it is clear that there is corruption in Nigeria. But where the debate is, is where exactly you will find this corruption. Many Nigerians believe that it is the public figures, especially in government, they are the ones who are responsible for corruption. So they believe that if you manage to round them all up and put them in jail, corruption will cease and our lives would be better. But nothing could be further from the truth. Why? This is because Nigerians typically fail to see the implications of their own behavior. Parents who pay off invigilators so that their children can be assisted to cheat in examinations. They want to be able to say, my child is the youngest graduate. They want to be able to say that their child at least appears to be bright, to be smart, all on a lie. They teach their children to look good by any means possible, employing every shortcut that they can buy. Sadly, they are unable to link their unchecked risky behavior to the rising number of women that are dying in childbirth because of incompetent care. The misdiagnosis of medical conditions lead, leading to unnecessary deaths of countless Nigerians. They can't see the connection. Their children leave school on a faulty foundation. And is it a surprise that they feel the need to keep cheating or acting corruptly in order to survive? Some politicians build their power bases on the back of hapless youth who lap up every promise that they're given in the hope that they will soon taste power and come into stupendous wealth as well. In the process of following and serving people who believe the ends justify the means, our young people end up believing in the words of Adam Smith, that life is short, brutish, and nasty. Life to them is the survival of the fittest. Our politicians do not see the pain and scarring of these young, impressionable minds till they one day band together in the call for revolution. The unchecked risky behavior of politicians in the handling of power and money is now threatening the unity of the entire country. The really successful business person in Nigeria is an enigma. Business success in Nigeria is today something of a mystery. It appears like a cult into which only those deemed worthy are allowed to go through initiation. In initiation, they are socialized into how to set up schemes how to set up rents, how to build public and private relationships that maintain powers and corrupt alliances, and that maintain the unwritten ways that wealth is now distributed in Nigeria. Young people learn that character, competence, and innovation don't really count. What counts? is your level of cunning, your ability to share, and your ability to carry your group along. We then wonder why investors may come, but few stay. Funds may be invested, but few gain. Even businessmen tend not to see the implications of their unchecked risky behavior. Entertainers in their songs and dramas 
portray the mood of the Nigerian people. Omo, I have to blow. I have to make it and make it big. Society seems to be unkind to the petty thief. It celebrates the overnight success, even if it is clearly from proceeds of crime or proceeds of corruption. Wealth without work is the unspoken Nigerian dream. This leaves young people impatient with due process. It leaves them unable to delay gratification and invest in proper preparation. Many in Nigerian society do not see how this unchecked risky behavior may have spawned the whole new industry around kidnapping, drug, and human trafficking. Prevention is indeed better than cure, even on the issue of corruption. We need to curb our risky, be risky tendencies that encourage a high social tolerance for corruption. Everything we do to resist, prevent, or reverse these attitudes is a personal contribution to the fight against corruption. We each need to fight corruption because if we do not, we remain insecure and we will still struggle to achieve economic growth. If Nigeria must grow and develop, we would have to curb insecurity and corruption. Whichever way we look at it, progress only comes when we deal decisively with the menace. In 2016, Integrity launched a project to track, analyze, map, and expose corruption risks. Believing that such unchecked risky behavior feeds the public attitude that tolerates and fosters corruption and allows the corrupt to go unpunished. We have a software system that we are developing which will be available to the public for free. It will enable us to start identifying the corruption risks we tolerate and what we need to do to control them. For this, we are especially grateful to the European Union that is providing the funds through the UNDP. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for listening. Thank you.